All right. So you got it. Thanks, Dan. Uh, Dan is the oracle of all knowledge uh, having to do with the, the student side of things. So please reach out to him with any, any questions, um, use a chat box. Uh, but the goal really of uh, today's uh, meeting, the virtual meeting, is to introduce all of you uh, to our orthopedic surgery residency department and program. Uh, as, as Dan said, I'm Hubert Kim. I'm the program director. And uh, we'll just give you a feel for what we're about uh, to give you kind of some information that may help you uh, get oriented before you come out here for many of you or for those of you who are just interested in learning more about our program, hopefully we'll get some of, some of that information across. Next slide, Dan. <clears throat> All right, so when we talk about a department, uh, I think you all realize it's really the people. It's not the buildings or even, uh, you know, the, the, the infrastructure per se. It's really the people with whom you work. And that's what, uh, through the many years I've been in the part of the department, the um, thing I'm most uh, proud about is the people we get to work with. So this is just a picture of our graduation dinner. Um, that's coming up shortly as part of a, an annual meeting where the, many of our alumni come back. Uh, it just kind of gives you a sense for uh, what our department kind of looks like as a group. Um, we're from all over the place. Uh, we have lots of uh, diversity in terms of a, a, basically any um, measure you want to use. Um, we are very collaborative, uh, work together well. And uh, the people most of us are most proud of are actually the residents. And so hopefully, <clears throat> if everything works out well, uh, you'll be able to join uh, this group uh, next year. Uh, next slide, Dan. So UCSF as an institution is one of the great institutions in the world. Um, the culture is very distinct. Uh, the really culture is of leadership, uh, mentorship, collaboration, discovery, and overall excellence. So a place like UCSF is, is um, you can't find it everywhere. It's, it's very unique. And we hope that uh, when you get a chance to come out here, you'll get, a, get to experience it in person. Next slide. So UCSF is very diverse, not just the hospitals and clinics, it's the, the patients we take care of, the people we work with, um, the hospital settings, uh, healthcare delivery models. Uh, we believe this diversity is a huge strength. Um, if you train at just one institution or with a hom homogeneous patient population or working collaborators, uh, it's just not the same. We think that this is a great strength and actually very critical uh, to the development of young orthopedic surgeons. Next. There we go. So just gonna kind of give you a picture. These, uh, these are our residents, our current residents. And you can see that uh, people ask what we're looking for. Um, there's no cookie cutter, cutter mold for a UCSF orthopedic resident. Um, it's not everybody's a D1 athlete who blew their ACL playing soccer, got a fix, and that's why they wanna go into ortho. That's, that's not who we are at all. Um, we, we are uh, a group of people who strive for excellence. Oh yeah, it's all just 1013. Brian, could you mute please? <laughs> Brian is our one of our associate program directors who's at a soccer game, but he'll be on later. Um, but again, I think this is just a snapshot. You might not be able to read the specifics, but these are residents, uh, our current residents who uh, represent every corner of our, our nation, um, very diverse in terms of their backgrounds, uh, their interests, uh, but their common uh, the commonality is they all want to be excellent. They want to all leave a mark, uh, make a difference, uh, really achieve great things. And that's really what we're looking for. Next. So this is some more details of uh, the medical schools that our residents have come from. You can see it's, again, from all parts of the country, large schools dominate, but some smaller schools as well. Um, so no matter what institution you're coming from, what we're looking for, uh, for primarily is how are you doing at that institution? Are you one of the top students at your school? Doesn't matter what school, if you're doing great as a student, you'll do great here. Okay, next. And these are the newest members we just uh, matched recently, and this is the incoming group. Um, I think we're probably uh, the most uh, uh, diverse incoming group uh, in the country. We have five out of seven of our incoming interns are women. 
And so it's, it's quite remarkable. Um, and, you know, it's, it's just, uh, I think, a testament to our longstanding commitment to a diverse uh, residency group. Next. And uh, this the longstanding tradition and longstanding uh, um, efforts of our program to promote women uh, in orthopedic surgery. Uh, as you must uh, all know, there uh, historically and, and to this day, uh, far fewer women in orthopedics and almost any other subspecialty in medicine. Um, we want to change that. And we've worked for many, many years on increasing the number of women on our faculty. And this is just a snapshot of most of the women on our faculty. <clears throat> but this is a um, very specific part of our mission. And it's not just the current faculty. Next slide. <clears throat> But it's also developing a pipeline uh, of um, students uh, from high school on uh, the Perry Initiative, uh, which is really fostering uh, STEM education and future uh, medicine and engineer uh, focused um, women to uh, foster their interests and uh, develop the pipeline for women who want to go into medicine and STEM fields. So this was originated at UCSF many years ago and has been really a very successful program. It's just kind of, you know, who we are and what we do. Okay, next. Oops, sorry, got a... Uh... Oh. Hello? Hear you. Hmm. I can hear you, Hubert. Okay. All right. So I just got kind of blocked out for a second. Okay. So take a look at our clinical program. So what this really uh, shows is the diversity and breadth and depth of all of the subspecialty areas in orthopedic surgery. So there is no area in our department that's under um, under um, represented in terms of level of expertise. And I think this is uh, this can be um, one of the strengths that we we look to. Uh, when we're saying that you can come here and train to be anything you want to be in terms of social specialty areas in orthopedic surgery. Next. So we're talking about the breadth and depth of all activities in our department. So clinical research, if you just scan down that list, basically clinical research is going on in every subspecialty area in just about uh, any field that uh, you could possibly be interested in. And UCSF is known for its basic science uh, research as well. So you can see some of the labs that you can participate in. Uh, some of the projects that uh, they, they do range from the very basic cell signaling to uh, more organismal uh, biology and injury models, uh, regenerative medicine, the whole gamut of basic science research and clinical research is available in our department. And we're UCSF, so we want all of you to be able to do research if that's what you choose to do in the future. Uh, we will teach you how to do that. Next. Uh, just a general slide that uh, shows um, our residents in the different uh, training centers. We have a, a Orthopedic Trauma Institute as a home of our, our um, basic surgery skills labs. Um, this is how we do some, much of our uh, cadaver work and uh, skills lab training. Um, and UCSF, this is part of what, what we do at UCSF. We are leaders in the field of uh, surgical education and our trainees benefit from that. Um, resident education is really uh, a central focus of the department. It always has been. I think when we talk about what we are most proud of as a department, resident education is right at the top of the list. Um, lots of uh, both support and, uh, and um, commitment to resident education, both from uh, an area of focus for the department and, and financially uh, to make all that happen. So these are just shots of some of the skills labs that get put on regularly. Um, just to and these are very expensive to do, but it's just a testament to the investment that we put into, into our trainees. Next. So, I'm the old person on the left. Uh, the younger blood uh, comes from Nicole Schroeder, who is on the line, and Brian Feely. Um, these are our two associate program directors. Uh, even younger are uh, Dan Peterson and Johnson Huang and Brad Stark, who are our administrative um, experts uh, who help support 
all the training activities, educational activities that go on in the department. So it's really our responsibility fundamentally to make sure that education at all levels is, is well done in our department. Uh, we're fully committed to that and we're the people that you can rely on to make sure that your education is taken care of. Next slide. So just educational philosophy, every program does it a little bit differently. Um, our basic philosophy is that you should get an experience in every subspecialty area twice. We want you to get it first as a junior resident, just so you get a chance to see what the different areas are like before you have to commit to a fellowship. But then we want you to come back to it after you've gotten your feet wet, acquired basic surgical skills, so that you can come back to that rotation, that subspecialty area, uh, with a higher level of expertise where you can do more complex cases, take on greater challenges. And we find that, uh, that this is the way really to hone your skills across uh, the various subspecialty areas. So we keep to that for just about, for actually for every subspecialty area except for oncology. Um, in addition, you'll have a rotation kind of a, a repeated exposure to trauma uh, at San Francisco General and uh, uh, multiple exposures to pediatric surgery at different, uh, different um, venues um, to round out your educational experience. But again, it's really, we want you to get two experiences at least in each of the major subspecialty areas. Uh, over time, we found that that is actually the most effective way to go. Next. So one of the things that uh, was really, um, I think foundational in terms of our educational um, program was the development of a global overseas uh, rotation. Uh, I think we were one of the first programs in the nation to really build that into our program and we do a rotation during PGY4. Uh, the good news is after uh, the hiatus that was uh, mandated by COVID, we are now again sending residents uh, overseas. Um, so we hope that uh, that will continue. Um, but this this is really a month spent in um, uh, uh, low-income, middle-income uh, countries uh, where healthcare is very, very different and gives our trainees a chance to see how healthcare is delivered in that part of the world. It's really eye-opening. Uh, I think the trainees come back with a much um, uh, stronger appreciation for what it takes to uh, take care of patients when all of the resources that we have at our fingertips are not available. Uh, so for those of you who are interested in global health, global orthopedics, uh, this is a chance to get your, your feet wet um, and, and, and actually do a hands-on experience uh, someplace that uh, is, is just a remarkable opportunity. Okay, next. So what else do we do for our trainees? We want to make sure that mentorship is available um, and focused on because we know that you can't get through something like residency training on your own. So we wanna provide you with that type of experience, that type of mentorship. Um, and one of the things we do is we develop uh, mentorship colleges where one member from each year in training is a part of that college along with a cadre of faculty who basically uh, take you through your five years of training in a smaller group. And so these are just three of the colleges. We actually have seven of them. Um, for the last couple of years, most of our activities have been virtual, which is kind of not great. Um, but now that things are opening up, we're going to return to in-person meetings. Uh, the social part of it is a real part of it. Getting to know faculty members outside of the OR and outside of clinic is really important so that you can see what uh, life is like for us uh, outside of uh, work. And the, uh, the bonding and support that come from that is uh, invaluable. Next. Okay, again, we're UCSF, so we're driven by research. Research and discovery are really part of the fabric of UCSF, and we want all of our trainees to know how to do research, even if you end up not doing it as part of your career. So we have uh, research requirements that include a hypothesis-driven research project, which is typically the major project for graduation. Um, all of our residents actually present grand rounds in front of the entire department and, and outside uh, viewers and we'll, we're starting to turn those into uh, review papers. Um, there's a requirement for another scholarly work. It can be um, any kind of um, manuscript that you wanna work on. And all of our residents actually submit a grant proposal to the OREF. 
um, and actually have an opportunity to get those funded. And if they aren't accepted the first time around, you can revise the grant, just like we all have to revise grants and get it funded through an intra, uh, intra-departmental uh, grant uh, mechanism. Um, so we'll pay for you to do research. We'll pay for you to go present that research. We want to encourage you to get out there and be um, experience research uh, in all of its uh, facets. And to do that, we provide very strong mentorship and a collaborative environment where you can work with the people you need to to get your projects done. Next. So we'd like you uh, through meetings like this one and more importantly, when you come out and rotate with us to, to, to answer some questions for yourself. Um, first and foremost, is UCSF the best learning environment for you? The way that you like to learn, uh, the environment that stretches your um, your horizons, uh, it, is this the right place for you? Um, does it have the culture and collaboration commitment to education uh, that you need? I think uh, you will find that we do uh, excel in these areas, but you got to see that for yourself. And then would you graduate from our program ready to do anything you want to? Not just, you know, clinical subspecialty areas, but careers in academic, careers in uh, private practice, whatever it is you want to do, Will UCSF be able to provide the training that you need to, to take that next step? And also just coming out to San Francisco, you know, is this the place you want to spend five or more years of your life? I think we all love the Bay Area. We all love San Francisco. That's why we're here. But again, you have to find out for yourself by, by getting out here. Next slide. That is it. All right. So, slide. you know, that's just an intro, um, but we want to give you some more detailed information. So we have representatives from each of our, or several of our subspecialty areas, and they'll each talk about their own uh, specialties and uh, the hospitals they work at. Um, if you're coming out to do uh, sub eyes, um, it may be at one or more of these sites. So please pay attention. I'm going to hand it off from there. Yeah, before we get into that, we have Dr. Thomas Vale here, our chair of the department, who will give us a brief introduction of himself before we dive into all the subspecialties. So, Dr. Vale. Great, thanks, Dan. Can you uh, drop the slides? Sure. Thing. See all these uh, smiling faces. Outstanding. Um, great to see everybody. Great to see so many uh, people uh, here on this uh, Zoom tonight, and I know. Uh, Many of you are planning to do sub eyes, and some of you are here just to uh, get information. Um, so welcome, and uh, I guess I should introduce myself. Uh, as, as Dan said, I'm the department chair. My name is Tad Vale. I'm a hip and knee surgeon, and I've been here for uh, 15, almost 16 years now, and uh, it's a remarkable place. So I'm, I'm delighted that you're interested and in, in taking a look. And I want you to know that this is part of a process of getting to know UCSF. We provide many opportunities. Uh, we've been doing it on Zoom for the last couple of years, of course. Uh, opportunities for you to look at in detail at, at different aspects of the program that Hubert told you about, whether it's uh, global health or educational opportunities or our focus on diversity, equity, inclusion, uh, other programs that are part of the fabric of, of this department. So I hope you'll take advantage not only of tonight, but of future opportunities to, to take uh, a deep look at, at this uh, program, which is very unique. UCSF's been around for almost 100 years. Uh, it's, it's not new. Uh, it's not the oldest medical school in the country, but uh, it's got a, a very a colorful history of contributions to uh, orthopedic surgery. And uh, today, we pride ourselves in trying to break ground in many areas. You heard a little bit about uh, our educational programs, the research programs, the global health. Uh, these, are, these are things that are very important to the faculty and the, and the trainees that, that come here. So if you are planning to come, uh, take advantage of the rotation that you're on, but also take advantage of the opportunity to see more of the sites, go to other, other places when you have time. Uh, to see if you're at San Francisco General, make sure you see Mount Zion, make sure you see the VA, the Orthopedic Institute. Get to know people, introduce yourselves. We wanna meet you, we wanna know about you, we wanna make sure that you feel comfortable here. So 
that's our goal. That's why we're here. And tonight you're going to hear a little bit more after me about some of the rotations, some of the services and, and what they offer so that you know a little bit more about what to expect when you arrive on the scene. So please reach out to us if you have questions. We want to make this logistically easy. We want you to feel comfortable and we want you to know as much as you possibly can about this program as you embark on your process of making a decision over the next year. So welcome to uh, the UCSF Department of Orthopedic Surgery. I'm not sure who follows me next. Uh, Nikki, who's, who's up uh, from the subspecialty programs? Yeah, I got it. Let me, thank you, Dr. All right, Dan. Thank you, everybody. And I'll share my screen again. First, we have sports medicine. Dr. Feely is not here right now. So we're going to skip him and go into foot and ankle. And I believe Dr. Toulier is here to talk to us. I'm here. Uh, I hope you guys can hear me. I'm joining you uh, from Alta Plaza Park, uh, right next to Mount Zion, because it's San Francisco, so it's 70 degrees and beautiful. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the foot and ankle service, aka the best service. Um, we have six attendings. Three of us are full-time attendings, and three of us are part-time attendings. Uh, Dan, if you could go one slide forward. Uh, Dr. Christina Olson the chief of our service. Uh, she did med school at USC, residency at University of Chicago, and then a fellowship at North Carolina. Um, and she's been on faculty now for over 10 years. I believe this is her 12th year um, leading our charge, which has been really great. And then next slide, Dan, if you don't mind. Our newest and nicest is Dr. Lan Chen, who we are fortunate enough was uh, came to join us two years ago. Unfortunately, it was in the middle of COVID, but now thankfully, as things are opening back up, Land's really been a great addition. She did med school and residency at Columbia and fellowship at HSS. Um, she was uh, working and teaching at uh, Northwestern for a little while and then has joined us now for uh, the last two years. Um, we can forward one more slide, Dan, if you don't mind. And I'm sorry you have to look at this ugly picture. Oh, the slide didn't come out any of it. Um, and I'm Dan Tuyer. It's great to meet you all. I did. Um, med school and residency out here. And I've been a part of UCSF other than my fellowship at uh, Harborview Medical Center for the last 20 years, which is shocking since 2002. Um, and then this year I'm at the head team position for the Oakland Roots, which is a, a professional soccer team in Oakland. Uh, that's been really fun. Marshawn Lynch is an owner, um, just to name drop badly. Um, so, uh, our service, we think is really great. We think we're all really nice and approachable. We really all care about education and med student, uh, teaching. Um, I spent a lot of time here, obviously, um, as a resident now being back on faculty for these last eight years. Um, so really looking forward to meeting you all. Uh, so I will pass it on. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Tulier. Uh, Next, we have Dr. Ishan Swarup. Up. I hope he's on the call. Yeah, Dan, right here. Awesome. That's a that's a tough act to follow, Dan, but uh, but I'll try. Um, so, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Ishan Swarup. I'm a pediatric orthopedic surgeon here at UCSF. Um, and uh, thank you again for your interest in our program. Just briefly, want to talk a little bit about uh, my service. Um, Dan, you can go to the next slide, please. So these are all the faculty members in pediatric orthopedics here at UCSF. Um, in total, we have nine orthopedic surgeons as well as two primary care sports medicine physicians. Um, and we're located at two clinical sites, uh, essentially on either side of the Bay Bridge. One is at Mission Bay uh, in San Francisco and the other is at the Children's Hospital in Oakland. Uh, so as you can see with a large faculty group, uh, we have a very busy practice. Um, go to the next slide, Dan. So some of the highlights of the rotation. Um, so as Dr. Kim mentioned earlier, you know, residents rotate on each service really essentially twice throughout their training. And so we first get the residents as PGY3s um, at our Oakland location or Oakland uh, clinical site. And then as PGY4s at the San Francisco site. Um, overall, if you look at our healthcare system, we are a major pediatric center or major pediatric healthcare system in the region. We have over 300 beds on both sides of the Bay. And um, our Oakland campus is a ACS level one pediatric trauma center. And if you're curious, there's only six of those in California. So it's, it's actually quite a quite an important designation. Um, we have a very large clinical volume. And I feel like, you know, 
Um, I was I was in your guys' shoes not that long ago. I can still kind of remember. And I remember someone had told me once that, you know, clinical volume is the most important thing. And I really do feel that for pediatric orthopedics, we, we have that um, here. Um, diversity, really, that is our motto. And you've already kind of heard that a few times. But for pediatrics, you know, not only do you get diversity of pathology and patient populations and in, in, in terms of the clinical sites that we have, uh, but also practice setting, the faculty training, um, as well as the teaching style. So I really feel like the residents enjoy that. Um, and that's really one of the highlights of the PEDS rotation. And then lastly, I, I think out of, you know, all other subspecialties, we, as, just like the other ones, we really do focus on resident education. That's why we work here. Um, and so we try to provide not only a balanced education clinically, but we also try to have a, a sound educational curriculum with, you know, core conferences, weekly conferences, tons of research opportunities with resident involvement in, in a lot of different types of research. Um, an emphasis on mentorship. Um, and then for, for you guys on the call, uh, we offer sub eyes at both locations so that you can learn more about us. Um, we traditionally have a two week rotation out of the Mission Bay campus paired with another subspecialty. And then last year we started a um, sub aisle on our Oakland campus. And uh, actually one of our sub eyes did match. So um, clearly they had a good experience. Um, so just uh, the plug for our sub eyes. Um, and you know we look forward to working with you guys. Um, Dan, go to the next slide. Uh, if there's any other particular questions, please feel free to contact me. Uh, but again, welcome. Thank you, Dr. Soro. Um, before we move on, I'll bring up if he's still here. No, Dr. Feely left us again. So we'll keep moving on. Um, Dr. McLeod, Dr. Theodore McLeod is up next. Uh, yeah, hi, Dan. Thanks, everybody, for uh, joining. So we wanted to just give you a quick brief of San Francisco General Hospital. You spend about a third of your uh, residency uh, at this place, and it's a vibrant uh, organization that is uh, quite large for the largest service in the hospital. Um, we have uh, quite a, a large faculty, as you'll see. It's a city and county hospital. So the city and county run the hospital, but the department uh, through UCSF has had a 100-year affiliation agreement to staff it. So all of the physician staff and the support staff are UCSF um, affiliated. Next, Dan. So as Dr. Vail mentioned, there's a lot of rich history in San Francisco. So just at the general, it was the first indigent care contract hospital. It was um, arguably the first emergency medical system and uh, trauma center uh, in the United States. Um, and uh, it was the, uh, one of the earliest teaching institutions in California, and it was the birthplace of the Orthopedic Trauma Association. Next, Dan. The uh, trauma center at San Francisco General is the only level one center in the city. It takes care of about a million and a half people uh, during the course of the day. San Francisco's population is about 800,000. And if you're heard anywhere from uh, the airport to the bridges, you'll be brought to San Francisco General Hospital it's never on divert for severe injuries. Next uh, slide, Dan. We have a full service uh, that encompasses clinical education, research, and outreach. We'll go through each of these uh, areas. And um, from a clinical standpoint, we uh, cover everything from orthopedics to PM&R to podiatry to orthotics and prosthetics. Next slide, Dan. The scope of service is, as I mentioned, uh, a full service, all encompassing. We have uh, subspecialty clinics in every single subspecialty. Uh, pediatrics and oncology are supported through UCSF and the rest of them are provided by the uh, orthopedic uh, faculty that are full-time at San Francisco General Hospital that also share some affiliation with other places as well. And so half of our faculty cover Mount Zion uh, Hospital and then the other half are down at Regional Medical Center in San Jose. But we are now the resource for Bay Area trauma. Next slide, Dan. From uh, an orthopedic surgery clinical standpoint, we have um, 19 full-time faculty, and that includes orthopedic faculty, which are orthopedics, uh, again, in subspecialty in trauma and hand, uh, one full-time podiatrist, and three full-time uh, PM&R faculty. We have two fellows, one of which that uh, stays at, in San Francisco. The other one is down at Regional Medical Center and they flip-flop during the course of the year. 
The residents have two teams of residents, uh, one of each year, and they include an emergency resident, emergency medicine resident, and we usually have uh, three interns that are rotating on the service and a host of students like yourselves. Next slide. Full-time clinical faculty, here's a list. And I think rather than go through each of the faculty, when you rotate out here, you'll be able to see them. And if you don't, you'll be able to read about them online. But what's notable is that the majority of the orthopedic faculty are also fellowship trained in not just trauma, but something else. So we're providing the highest level of care, uh, not just on trauma when you're on call, but also in another subspecialty. And so if you need a foot and ankle reconstruction, uh, we have somebody for that. If you need an arthroplasty, we have somebody for that. And the residents get the full exposure to a very wide variety of uh, care uh, provided by outstanding surgeons, uh, outstanding trained surgeons. Next slide, Dan. As I mentioned, we have part-time volunteer faculty as well uh, in foot and ankle peds and tumor. And uh, these uh, faculty come down uh, anywhere from a day, uh, a month to a day a week. And uh, if there are cases that need to be done, they're usually done at San Francisco General Hospital in these specialties. Next, Dan. The orthopedic rotation is a very resident education, strong rotation. In fact, it's a student strong education uh, as well. And it's rated as one of the uh, favorites throughout the course of the year. And it's the reason why a lot of medical students come to San Francisco General. As Dr. Bale had mentioned, the um, core surgical facility uh, and I think Dr. Um, uh, Kim mentioned this as well, is at San Francisco General Hospital, do your anatomy. And um, I'll talk about core curric curriculum in one second. Next slide, Dan. We have weekly conferences uh, every day and you'll see cases pre-op, post-op and discuss uh, complications. So you get the full uh, course of uh, care. And then we also have teaching conferences as well that are focused on resident education. And it's not just uh, faculty teaching residents, but residents also get a chance to step up and teach other residents as well. Next, Dan. The training center is the only one in the entire UC, UC system. Uh, we have a total of uh, seven workstations. And throughout the course of your summer, you're doing anatomy there. And throughout the uh, course of your year, you're also rotating through summer, through um, core competency. Uh, courses, and we have both industry and educational courses, uh, not just for orthopedics, but for other services as well. Next slide, Dan. Here's a picture of the uh, core curriculum, as you can see it, and then each specialty gets to choose three of its top uh, procedures and then goes through it in a cadaver to make sure that everybody's getting all of the steps along the way. It's not just see one, do one, teach one. It's actually see one, practice one, and then experience one and then, and then do it. And so you're really getting a lot of hands-on experience as you go through um, your training. Next slide, Dan. The research facilities uh, are all encompassing. Uh, there are some residents that will um, do their research uh, projects out at San Francisco General Hospital. If we were our own uh, department, we would be ranked in the top 15 in the country in NIH funding amongst departments. And we uh, er cover everything from basic research to international medicine. Next slide. The Institute for Global Orthopedics and Traumatology um, was mentioned both by Dr. Kim and Dr. Vale as um, our inter through our international efforts. And what we're focusing really on are uh, our ability to develop sustainable partnerships. And it's not just going and operating, it's really going there and establishing some sort of longitudinal care or some educational program or sharing in research or leadership projects. Next slide. The uh, resident electives, uh, Dr. Kim had mentioned, uh, our residents are, uh, um, can elect to go to a variety of different uh, places. And we've had over 70 international observers come back through San Francisco General Hospital as well in, uh, in exchange. Uh, next slide. So uh, thank you, welcome to everybody. Uh, and I look forward to uh, meeting those of you who uh, rotate through and then the others who don't, we're always available for questions. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dr. McLeod, appreciate it. Uh, we have Dr. Feely here now. So we'll have him talk about sports right now. There's no slides for it. So we'll leave it on the slide. Dr. Feely. All right, 
Hi, everybody. I'll try to keep this pretty brief. Um, sports section doesn't really need any slides because it's pretty much the best rotation as it is. Um, we're kind of the flagship for people who really like everything about orthopedic surgery. We have a total of seven surgeons plus four primary care sports people. We're predominantly based at the Orthopedic Institute. And on the rotation, you see a variety of primary and revision sports cases. So ACL, meniscus, cartilage surgeries, stabilizations, and rotator cuff repairs. We also have a busy shoulder replacement service. So if you're on the service for two weeks, we try to get you two to three days where you're doing shoulder replacements as well. Um, we also do a fair amount of complex surgeries, including tendon transfers, multi-leg knee reconstructions, and advanced cartilage procedures. Um, when you're on the service, uh, there's a nice mix of usually about four days or three and a half days of OR and uh, one to one and a half days in the clinic. Um, that's about it. I think it's a great rotation, but all the other rotations here are really fun as well. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Feely. Appreciate it. Uh, next up, we have the spine service. So Dr. Metz is here to talk to us about that. Hi, nice to meet you all. My name is Lionel Metz. I'm a pediatric and adult spine deformity surgeon. Next slide. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce you to our service. On the, uh, We have six core faculty at our main location at the Parnassus campus. On the left is Sigurd Bourbon. He's our service chief and specializes in adult uh, reconstructive surgery and adult deformity. Uh, to his right is Badat Devrin, also specializes in adult uh, reconstruction. Bobby Tay, uh, to the right of him, specializes primarily in cer cervical as well as degenerative uh, lumbar pathology. Dr. Birch is another adult deformity surgeon. Uh, this uh, sort of slimmed down picture of me is, uh, <laughs> is next. And I, again, specialize in pediatric and adult deformity. And our newest faculty member is Alekos Theologis, who specializes in tumors as well as uh, spinal tumors, as well as adult reconstruction. Our service is comprised of three fellows. Um, those fellows rotate throughout the year on the blue, gold, and uh, float services, and two residents, an R2 on the gold service and an R3 on the blue service. And then again, we look forward to welcoming sub eyes on our service. Next slide, please. Um, the week for sub eyes uh, is broken down into this general uh, layout. Uh, we generally we have sub eyes pre round prior to rounding with our residents and fellows. The rounding is somewhat early because uh, uh, we have didactic conferences that start at seven typically on Mondays and Tuesday, Tuesdays. Those are sort of highlights of our service. The um, spine Indications Conference, where you sort of see the depth and breadth of spine pathology and surgical approaches um, is on Monday from 7 to 8. And then we have a didactic conference every Tuesday from 7 to 8. Um, we also have research conference on Thursday, which you're welcome to attend, and then another uh, case conference on Friday. We try to get you into the OR three days a week, but... Um, emphasize that a lot of learning, particularly with the neurologic exam and how to work up and uh, indicate patients for surgery happens in the clinic. So it's important to see you in the, uh, in the office as well. Next slide, please. You'll see a variety of pathology from bread and butter, cervical and lumbar pathology. And these are some slides of just routine cervical and lumbar degen cases. Um, but you also see more complex uh, and more rare cases. And UCSF is, is known for um, spinal deformity. That's sort of what put UCSF spine on the map. Um, and so we look forward to you seeing some more complex cases, including tumors and major uh, osteotomies as well. Next slide, please. This is just an example of uh, some of the more complex surgery that you hopefully will get a chance to see when you're rotating with us. Next slide. And a brief overview of some of the rotation objectives. Um, most importantly, learn to uh, do a sound neurologic exam and, uh, and recognize worrisome pathology. Thanks very much. Looking forward to seeing you all. 
Awesome. I appreciate it. Dr. Metz, thank you. Uh, I'm going to skip through these next few slides because our oncology team is not quite here yet. And we're going to go to arthroplasty with Dr. Hansen. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Eric Hansen. I'm the division chief of arthroplasty, and I thank you for taking time out of your busy evening to join us uh, and look forward to having you uh, rotate with us uh, during your sub-internship. Uh, for arthroplasty, you're going to uh, get a very broad uh, experience during your training uh, as a resident, but I'm going to speak specifically about the arthroplasty rotation at Parnassus um, uh, because that's where you're going to be uh, rotating as a sub-I. Next slide. So we have five full-time faculty members, uh, including our chairman, Dr. Vail, uh, Dr. Beanie, myself, uh, Dr. Ward, and Dr. Berry. I think it's important to highlight that uh, Drs. Ward, Berry, and myself all did medical school and residency at UCSF, and so we're very, very committed uh, to the education and training of both medical students uh, and our residents. Um, joining you on the rotation will be uh, two residents, a PGY-2 and a PGY-5, as well as two clinical fellows. Um, but because of our, our volume, uh, you'll uh, definitely uh, have a lot of uh, independent uh, opportunities to work with uh, faculty members, both in the OR uh, and in clinic. Next slide. So what is arthroplasty at UCSF? Well, we do primary uh, total joints uh, as well as partials. Um, but as I think you've heard from other speakers thus far, um, UCSF is a tertiary care center. So we get the complex of the complex. Uh, I would say that approximately 20% of our practice is either um, challenging primary total joint replacements or revisions for the following indications, loosening, fracture, uh, and infection. Next slide. Uh, next slide. Sorry about the... Uh, um, so we have a, a, a busy uh, and sort of high uh, volume uh, practice. We do about 1,500 uh, cases a year. I think what's one of the highlights uh, of our group is our variability and our approaches and philosophies about doing joint replacement. So you'll have uh, exposure to um, anterior, lateral, posterior hips, uh, different thoughts about the proper alignment of putting in total knees. Uh, you'll also... Um, uh, see the use of robotics uh, in both uh, hip and knee replacement. Uh, and our faculty, as has been mentioned uh, previously, has both diverse academic and clinical interests. And hopefully, uh, we will uh, have conversations about interesting research topics that might spur you to, to join us in collaboration on, on future endeavors. Um, also, oh, back to the slide. Uh, the other element to talk about is just uh, the educational uh, curriculum for you while you're on service. Uh, so the Tuesday mornings are um, reserved for kind of uh, didactic teaching. Uh, Wednesdays will be the ground rounds, um, but we also have a weekly uh, indications conference where we review all the cases for the upcoming week, and that's a great opportunity to have interactive uh, teaching. And last slide. So hopefully, uh, as you rotate uh, on our service, you'll understand why we all chose uh, this subspecialty. I think we all recognize that it's a, a one of the most successful orthopedic procedures um, that we, we do. Uh, we have a lot of happy patients. Uh, we have no dearth of, of volume uh, as the years go forward. And I think what goes unrecognized uh, in many regards is the long-term relationship that arthroplasty surgeons have with their patients. Uh, and that's really what kind of got me into the um, field. Uh, and I think you'll see that uh, when you are in the office with us. So thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Hansen. Um, last but not least, we have Dr. Nikki Schroeder, who is my doctor boss, as I call it, in <laughs> of hand surgery. Thanks, Dan. Um, Dr. Westrek, are you on the line yet? I know you're logging in. Um, Do you see her yet? I don't see her yet, but I'll let you yeah. know. Okay. So you don't let her jump ahead of me as she's in the middle of a case. Um, anyways, I'll introduce myself and as she hops on, I'll let her go ahead of me. Um, so I'm Nikki Schroeder. Um, I'm chief of hand and upper extremity service. 
I'm one of the associate program directors along with Dr. Feely, and I run all of the medical student electives, including sub -eyes. Um, so it's really fun to see all of your faces and finally put a picture to the names of, of applications that I've been reading for the past month or two or three or however long it's been. Um, anyways, welcome and we're very glad to have you guys here. Um, just to give you a brief rundown of the hand service, you can go to the next slide. So uh, there are currently seven of us and TBD hiring another one coming very shortly, but we are the quickest growing pod in the orthopedic department right now. And um, you can see from these lovely smiles on all of our faces how much we love our job. So um, we, we run the gamut of all the hospitals. So some of us work part-time at San Francisco General. Um, Dr. Santi Esteban also works in Marin. Um, Dr. Mason, who has been our longest faculty member, is primarily in private practice, but um, comes to join us once a week and is an outstanding arthroscopist who teaches nationally on that. Um, although we are the hand and upper extremity group, we actually have really um, spread our wings over the past few years. We've developed a peripheral nerve clinic um, that does a lot of brachial plexus and peripheral nerve surgeries and tendon transfers. Um, and that is a collaborative effort between us and the plastic surgeons um, at UCSF. And we've brought in a, one of the brachial plexus uh, specialists uh, that is a um, former professor at Stanford to um, aid in that clinic. So I think that's been an outstanding addition over the past few years and it's continuing to grow. Um, we do primarily outpatient surgery. Um, one of the best parts about hand, I would say, is that it's outpatient, but we do have inpatient, including elbow, a lot of elbow surgery, um, of course, a lot of infections um, and a lot of trauma. Um, so we operate at Mount Zion, typically for those cases, the outpatient or at our orthopedic institute. Um, and then we do a lot of trauma at San Francisco General where you'll get to see kind of some very bread and butter hand because we take care of um, all the cities uninsured and marginally insured, as well as a lot of trauma that comes through the door. Um, so some very interesting cases. So. Um, I think it's really a outstanding opportunity. Um, as you saw from Dr. Metz's slide, you'll see some really big incisions on spine and then some really tiny incisions on hand. So that's, I think, why they paired us together for the rotations. Um, but um, we're really looking forward to having you. One other thing that I will say while we still have you on the line quickly before Dr. Westrack um, chimes in is um, as part of the sub eye, we actually... Um, several years ago started a de dedicated sub -I education, um, which is once a week, you guys are brought together um, to do just education for student level, which I think has been one of the most um, appreciated parts of our sub -I is actually we teach just to you without the residents there, um, done by our attendings, and we have varying topics over the course of the month. And so our sub -I's are currently running from May until November this year, if you can believe it, it's crazy. but. Um, we really look forward to having you guys. Um, and Dr. Westrek, are you on the line? I'm here. Woohoo! All right. Last but not least. I'm running it back. Here we go. All right. Thank you. Uh, my name is Rosie Westrack. I'm the um, Chief of Orthopedic Oncology, and uh, we love having sub eyes on our rotation. Really enjoy having you part of the team. Um, so next slide. This is our team. We have three attendings, um, Dr. Richard O'Donnell, myself, and Dr. Melissa Zimmel. And in addition to musculoskeletal oncology, Dr. O'Donnell runs the osseo integration program. So I don't know if you've had the opportunity to see that at your medical schools, but those are the percutaneous bone anchored implants um, for amputees. And then uh, it comes through the skin and you attach an external prosthesis. So that's um, something we've been doing as a prospective study with Walter Reed. Um, and it's a pretty active multidisciplinary complex amputee clinic that he runs. And there's some pretty amazing surgeries. In addition to um, the three attendings, we have one UCSF PGY3 on the rotation and one UCSF Fresno PGY2 on the rotation. Next slide. Um, we primarily work out of um, the Mission Bay Hospital. So that's um, near the Orthopedic Institute, um, near the ballpark and the Chase Center. So we have all of our clinics there and two OR days a week. 
And then one ORI day a week is over at Parnassus Heights, um, that's Mondays. And we generally do our call cases or our very sick patients up there or co-cases with the spine service um, is typically done up at Parnassus Heights. Next slide, please. Um, so one of the things I really like about orthopedic oncology and what drew me into the field, and hopefully some of you uh, think the same way, is it's very multidisciplinary. So within orthopedics, uh, we work with spine, we work with arthroplasty, we work with trauma, we work with hand, we work with foot and ankle, and we even work with sports, which is like kind of amazing. But um, there are some, some times that we'll do joint cases, for instance, maybe a proximal humerus, humerus resection and replacement with a reverse total shoulder. So there's something for everyone. And then we also work closely with our medical oncology colleagues, both in adult and pediatrics, radiation oncology, pathology. In fact, I'm just about to go down to the pathology room and look at the frozen for my case. Um, so working with a lot of different services, which I like. Um, and then these images are, are meant to show you pediatrics. So the picture on the left is an osteosarcoma in a pediatric patient. And the image on the right is a high-grade soft tissue sarcoma in adult. Uh, next slide. So we treat adults, we treat pediatrics, everything in between. Um, you know, our youngest patient to date so far is um, 18 months and oldest is 99. So we really span the spectrum, which is great. Um, primary bone sarcomas, primary soft tissue sarcomas, metastatic disease to the bone, benign bone and benign soft tissue tumors. Next slide, please. And then we operate all over the body. So this is another great thing about our services, huge incisions, really good anatomy all over the body. And I think it's a really, um, good learning experience for um, medical students, you know, because it's a great way to sort of really see the relationship between the nerves and the vessels and muscles and the bone. And we, we literally do operate everywhere, except maybe gist. We don't really do gist. Okay, next slide. Um, and then great surgeries. Uh, so on the far left, that's a a uh, patient that had an angiosarcoma around his acetabulum. Dr. Hansen helped me with that case. Um, the next slide is an um, intercalary endoprosthetic compress reconstruction. The next slide is a proximal, timor, proximal tibia replacement for an osteosarcoma. And then that awesome picture on the right, hopefully no one's eating, is a very large uh, soft tissue sarcoma in the thigh that we uh, recently removed. So we operate everywhere. We do all different types of resections and reconstructions. Um, I think that might be my last slide. That's right. Yeah. So um, anyway, I think it's a, we love having you guys and uh, really a lot of opportunities to sew, close, um, see a lot of interesting things and treat a lot of grateful, wonderful patients. Thanks. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Wistrak. And that's it from all of our faculty. Thank you all faculty for being here. Um, we'll open it up to questions now and I'll stop sharing my screen. Feel free to ask away if you have any questions. You can drop it in chat or unmute yourself. Or you don't have to answer, ask any questions since we did a, such a Good job explaining our program. That's what I love about it. And it's 626. We did it before time ran out. I was going to say, I'm impressed. We're so timely. I know. Way to go, team. One thing I will tell you guys, having done this for many years and being in charge of assigning you all to rotations, and I know that it's hard to decide which rotation to apply for, which one to do, which hospital you'll be assigned to. Um, I think one of the best things that we do is that we have um, you know, residents at every rotation, we have summer anatomy, you get to meet all of the residents, typically, even if you're out at Children's Hospital Oakland, um, you still get opportunity to come to core lecture to sign on a core lecture to come to anatomy when we have it. Um, so you really have the opportunity um, to meet a lot of our residents as well as a lot of our faculty. And then the other option is when you're at UCSF, you rotate for two weeks on one service, two weeks on another service. So you get the opportunity to see typically the way they're paired is you have kind of a heavy inpatient rotation and then you switch to a lighter outpatient rotation. Um, so we do that so that you have the opportunity to see a lot of whatever inpatient um, surgery looks like and then the outpatient. Um, 
Um, so that's kind of how you will get assigned based on your interests and um, hopefully people will start receiving invitations soon. And here's a question from the chat. Um, if we want to spend a day or two on other services, is that possible? <laughs> um, that's a great question. Sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. Um, so one of the things I'll tell you is that um, the way that we set up call is for those of you that are assigned to San Francisco General, you'll be taking call Monday to Friday. And then those at UCSF um, will take call there on the weekend. So you do have an opportunity to rotate at San Francisco General and see what's going on at our level one trauma center. Um, the uh, You can certainly rotate the reverse, but it's not quite as busy at UCSF on the weekend because it's not a level one call center. Um, for the person that's rotating at Children's Hospital Oakland, you have that opportunity, but you're quite busy and taking, you know, a decent amount of call. So we usually don't, um, you don't need to take that opportunity. And then oftentimes, because the way summers are and people might be on vacation, if you have a light day on service, we usually do offer you the opportunity to go to another service and do surgeries with them or go to somebody else's clinic. Great. Uh, another question, do we always get our choice rotation or is there a lottery system? Um, that's a, also a great question. It depends on how many people apply every month. So we currently have, you know, over 80 people apply for our stub eyes. Um, some months aren't completely full. And so typically those people get their um, rotation that they asked for. Um, and then it's broken up by hospital system. So if you chose rotation a, you're assigned to UCSF, and then I just assign you to a rotation there. Um, and so most of the time I try and give everybody their first choice, but it doesn't always work. And sometimes you end up with your second choice. Yeah, if you have any subspecialty requests that you wanna send in, you send them to me. Uh, like she said, we cannot guarantee any services, but it's good for me to know so we can try our best. Um, another question. Does the program have journal club for residents that we could join in on? Oh, that's a great question. I am one minute away from going to my hand journal club. So yes, there is, there is journal club. I will be late to it this evening. Um, we also do have um, journal club on every rotation. And uh, Dr. Kim or anybody else, if you want to chime in, I don't mean to like be stealing the line here. Um, but there is rotation. There is journal club at six thirty in the morning that um, our residents are involved in, and I actually don't know about the ability to bring in non UCSF students to that. Do you know, Dr. Kim? Yeah, all students have access to all educational activities. Um, but the not downside. Quite. The downside is that it was easy to do when it was all Zoom. Um, we're hoping that you guys will all get a chance to do more uh, in-person stuff, in which case you can't be in two places at the same time. But there, uh, hopefully there'll be a way to uh, electronically connect to the things that uh, you can't go to in person. Um, so we'll, we'll be as flexible as possible. There's no specific you know, moratorium on that. Great. Any more questions before we sign off? It is 6.30 now, our time. Okay, thank you everyone. Thank you faculty, thank you students. I will stop recording now. I will stay on.